Hi, I'm Jim Martin. I'm with the Charleston Parks Conservancy, and we're, today we're here in my garden. It gives us an opportunity to look at some of the really cool things that are flowering this time of year. We are finally in the spring of the year, and I'm just thrilled to be here and have a chance to show you some of the things that I have flowering in the garden today. Uh, as you look around, you can see that here in the low country of South Carolina, this time of year, there's some fantastic things that are in full bloom. Um, over here, we've got a fantastic salvia that many people think the salvias are one of those things that flower in the fall. And actually, this time of year, you get this really big flush of flowering. They sort of settle out for the summer a little bit, and then back in the fall, they're flowering again. Um, and this salvia is a salvia called Salvia maraschino. It's basically evergreen through most of the winter, and then um, I do a little cutback on this, usually twice a year. I'll do some cutting back in uh, July, and then I'll do some cutting back in uh, uh, late winter, and then it will reflush, and, and here we have it in full bloom right now. Another one of my favorites that we see over here with some really interesting foliage, and if you look in the back over there, you can see that it's got a flower stalk coming, uh, coming up from it. It's an, uh, an agave-like plant called uh, matcha mocha, and uh, it, it, uh, its flower stalk will come up. It's going to flower in about uh, another month. And the flower always reminds me of like a little alien at the top. It's just fantastic and, when it, and very interesting for the garden. If you look around, you'll see a variety of things in a garden space that's very much dry. And uh, in the garden, we have some specific sort of environments. One is a, a, a hot, kind of dry space, and then we'll see some uh, wetter areas as we go along. Uh, also, one thing to keep in mind that this is full sun, and so everything that you see growing in this space can handle the full sun that we have here in, in the low country uh, that'll, that'll uh, really feel like it's baking us in the middle of summer, but actually these plants are going to love that kind of thing. Uh, over here we have a fantastic little bulbine uh, that uh, bulbines are, are very succulent-like plants, love the heat, and amazing thing about this bulbine is it going to be in flower. Well, it, it started flowering about two weeks ago, and it's going to be continuing to flower all the way through the summer into the early fall until we have a frost. So that can be anywhere into November when it's still flowering. So, you know, it's amazing. Some of these things we think, oh, you know, I'm not going to get much off of that. And really, in the garden here, I'm looking for things that give me not only good uh, flowering here and there, but, you know, foliage is probably the most important thing that we can uh, look at when we're talking about what to put in our gardens. Because Really, the foliage, we, because our season is so long here in the south, the foliage is very important, the structure of it. Uh, for example, this uh, little aloe that we have over here, a very beautiful aloe that you can see the foliage on it is very interesting. And it, without the flowers, which this time of year we have these fantastic flowers, I mean, look at that. Is that not gorgeous? Just the other day, had some uh, hummingbirds in the garden, the first set. Very interesting because I have a little mirror in one part of the garden and the one kept flying by the mirror going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's like, it's a mirror, buddy, it's a mirror. So anyway, <laughs> they get a little confused. But this is the perfect uh, uh, morning meal for a hummingbird. And they're going to come up here as well as some of the, the uh, butterflies that we have starting to show up in the garden this time of year. So, you know, it's pretty amazing. Here we are, the end of April, right, somewhere in the mid-April, and all these, you know, insects, uh, the the little spiders that are starting to emerge that will create their webs for the summer. All these things are coming out now, so it's uh, the garden is, is really an active place to be. As we move through the garden here, you can see, well, I think the, the first thing that you might notice is the fact that we have this very large fence, and our friends refer to this as the giraffe fence. And we put it up because we live right next to this wonderful golf course, uh, the which is fantastic unless you have uh, a very bad golfer who's having a very bad day who then uh, decides to swing a little bit to one side and it ends up hitting the, the pane glass window. So we built this as a way not only to block the golf balls, which what happens is they, they hit the fence and they, they, you hear the bing and then they drop as opposed to hitting the pane glass window and hearing the crash. So it's a little bit of a different thing there. The other reason was I, I wanted some vertical space. And this was the perfect way to have vertical space. It allowed us to view through the, uh, through the fence to the golf course and the marsh behind it, but at the same time, um, give us plenty of area, square footage to grow vines up. So uh, throughout the year, we have all kinds of things flowering. Right now, we have a rose that's in full flower, Cecile Bruner, uh, uh, a beautiful tiny little once a year flower, but 
totally worth it. And I and I use the word little, but obviously this thing is not teeny. Um, and it's uh, it's kind of a pig to tell you the truth. But beautiful beautiful rose, uh, and it's uh, next door to a, a plant called bignonia, or the cross vine, and it's just about ready to to stop flowering right now. But it has those orange flowers, and sort of picks that you know that little orangey pinky things picking up the pink in the the Cecile Bruner rose. So very very good combination. And then, you know, most people, uh, the bottle brush plant here we have, which excellent for very dry conditions. So you can see, get a feel for that we still are in a part of the garden that's very dry. And it is just starting to send out its flowers. This is another one that the butterflies and the hummingbirds are just crazy over. So they'll, you know, th very shortly, within the next week or so, they're going to have plenty to munch on. It's going to be a wonderful place to be, I'm telling you what. Send, it, send this out to all the butterflies and the, the hummingbirds. It's time to come back. And we do have visiting uh, hummingbirds that are back and forth throughout the year. As we move through this garden space, uh, oh, and let me point out this, this uh, tree right here. This is a, uh, it's an Oriental Granddaddy's Graybeard. Gran uh, Oriental Granddaddy's Graybeard. And uh, it's uh, one called China Snow. And it'll do this, this flowering thing right here. It's a small, uh, multi-trunked kind of tree excellent for uh, a little bit of shade to full sun. This garden in the morning is a little shaded, but then as the day moves on, it gets very hot. So it, it, uh, with the afternoon sun, we have the sun setting uh, in front of us. And so in the evenings, uh, you, you get to watch the sun as it sets over the marsh. It's really quite beautiful. We're very lucky to be here. Now, what's interesting about this garden is that you come to this one space and you start to ask yourself, what about all these things that are here? You know, these don't look like dry garden things, and they're not. And the, uh, the really cool thing about this is this used to be a driveway that came up to the house going into a garage, which has now been converted to a room. And so underneath this soil right here is a slab about 7 to 12 inches thick. And there was no way for us to get rid of the slab. I mean, it would have broken the foundation trying to get it out of here. So what we did is put a little soil on top, and this is basically a wet garden here. And so everything you see in here are things that very much can take the moisture. Whenever we have heavy rains, those deluges that we're so known for here in the south, this area just, you know, it fills up for water, and so it basically stays wet. So it's a perfect spot for things like the uh, Zephyranthes candida, the August rain lilies, which has fantastic foliage and it will start flowering in August when we have those sort of evening rains that come through once in a while. And then right next to it, we have the pineapple lily. And I love the fact that the pineapple lily foliage, which is very broad and burgundy against the very strap-like foliage of this um, Zephyranthes or August rain lily, is a perfect combination. Very fine textured with very coarse textured. Um, not to mention that when the uh, a eucomus or pineapple lily flowers in the late summer. It, it's this fantastic bloom, very tall, multi florets all the way down. Perfect uh, plant to take a look and have cocktails. Celebration time when the plant gets ready to flower. And then, you know, right, another plant that by the end of the summer is going to be to the top of the roof here. Uh, would be this alocasia called alocasia portadora and it's a big elephant ear and you can see it's just starting to emerge it made it through those 28 degree nights we had this past winter which were you know for, for any of us who are gardeners or any of us out there it's tragic to have that 28 degrees it just burns everything to the ground so uh, I'm very lucky that this thing has decided that um, it, it snubbed its nose at that 28 degrees so here we go